My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is part 11 of the Easy Engine build, and this video is going to be quite a quick one, it's just catching up on some of the stuff that I've done before we move on to um, porting, and so on and so forth. So, one of the first things we've got to look at there is the, um, this is a D drill bit, or a D bit, so basically it is a piece of HSS steel, and it is just a straight blank and then you machine most of the side away, one flank away and then the actual cutting edge is on the tip and there's a close up of that so you can see that there's the cutting edge which is at the top of the picture and then the relief which you can see the rest of it around the centre. So why do we have um, a D bit? Well if you want to cut straight holes, um, very long small diameter straight holes then you really want to use a D bit. Um, D bits are stiffer because there's literally more material than your standard helical drill. And this is to do the 5mm or 5.1mm hole for the head bolts that go from the head straight through the cylinder to the actual um, engine cases. So I need a very, very straight hole that's going to go through a hell of a lot of aluminium. It's about 70mm of alley and I want it straight so when it comes out the other end it's not off and wonky because I'm going to uh, tap the holes and basically I have to tap the holes so they're in the correct place so they do not breach the crank casing. So there you can see it's really slow pecking away at first you've got to make sure that you do get it aligned and as you can see it's actually biting into the sleeve as well and this was done intentionally so that I can um, so the bolts that uh, clamp the head on stop the cylinder itself from rotating instead of putting a little dowel pin I could also do that as well but as you can see it's um, little tiny little chips you can see the conical chips that come off and I just there's nothing really much to see here apart from you just go further and further down take your time always back the drill out peck away and um, add to, I, I use water for this to cool the actual uh, drill bit and then here you can see me drilling, this is just drilling and tapping um, the centre punch marks you can see in the top of the cases and I've just filled the cases there with um, some tissue paper and stuff just basically to stop most of the swarf and stuff falling down inside. So the next thing we're going to move on to is we are going to make a custom spark plug. Um, there's no point saying that we're going to build an entire engine without doing the spark plug and all the, well most of the electronics as well. So the way I'm going to do this is I've got an M14, um, no not an M14 sorry, an M10, <laughs> an M10 with a 14mm hex and I want to use the M10 thread as my spark plug thread and I want to reduce the size of the hex to a 10mm hex, uh, no is it a 10, yes it's a 10mm hex on this actual bolt. So what I've done is there, as you can see, is that I've stuck a nut into the um, chuck of the uh, lathe and I'm clamping on that and I'm threading the uh, stainless bolt into the nut and I've got a, f a big flat penny washer, repair washer, whatever you want to call them, um, a big flat washer there. And the reason why that washer's there is so I can actually uh, machine all the... Um, I can machine all the way up to um, and past the actual flange that's on the bolt and not you know, basically just not hit the chuck in any kind of way. Um, there you can see, there's a, an image there, you can see where there's the nut arrangement and the bolt, basically that just helps you align it. So basically what I do is I start machining down the flange and the uh, outside of the hex, and you can see there that I've skimmed the actual washer, that's fine, it's just going to chew into the washer, it's not going to chew into your um, jaws and it's also basically going to stop you breaking your inserts. Um, I just take a bit more and a bit more down, just keep on going until I get to the diameter and you can see the hex just start to disappear then, disappear there and I face the actual top of the bolt as well. So then I machine a shoulder, you can see there's a little shoulder there that I've got marked out with uh, black sharpie or blue sharpie and uh, then I need to start um, boring, well not boring this out, drilling this out to receive uh, our insulator. 
So I just sent a drill it, and then I think that's a three mil, and then just open it up to a eight mil. I think it is. Flip it over so I can then um, part off or face off the end of the bolt so I get my um, thread length correct. Uh, then what we do is keeping it locked. You can see there's the end of the bolts missing there. Uh, most of the thread is missing. The thread that I actually want and require is inside the nut. But now that this is still all tightened down on this nut, um, I do not remove any of it and I take it straight over to the milling machine. And basically, because I have the the nut, it's like an uh, it's like an RC collet basically in a sense, where I can use the flat of the washer to give me my end stop and I can use the nut squares to give me my reference surfaces. So then with that in mind I can then go around with the end mill which you can see here and just basically start nibbling a hex into it. And that's what I do. There's one flank and then basically get it to the dimension that I want and then just move around and around. You don't need to see the rest of them. Move around and around and then basically that's what I end up with. So I've got a nice hex there with this shouldered section and then basically I'll just stick it in the lathe and just use a file and some sandpaper and stuff just to clean up the uh, look of it. And then I use a 10 um, millimeter um, spanner just to undo it from the chuck. And this is where we have it, this is where I am up to now. You can see that I've got the nice chamfer around the outside. There's the hex, there's the shoulder and there's the thread. And there you can see the drawing for the rest of the insulator and the actual um, electrode. So the next thing I need to do on the spark plug is actually do the uh, actual um, earthing arm on the end of the spark plug. And we will be covering that next. So uh, that's coming up and um, the porting for the actual engine itself and bits and pieces. And then eventually we'll move on to the carb and the electronics and such. And then we'll be done. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in a bit.